Hello, welcome to the Dawn, playground for the new power generation. So, so I say you can call 404-827-1500, ask for viewer hit zero, and ask for viewer services, and leave that comment on the comment line. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for that. You know, I was on the radio this morning. Everywhere I've been, you know, I'm not going to have an argument with someone about the Bible. But I will tell you that religious doctrine and the church has been used for a long time to discriminate against a whole lot of people, and not just gay people. It started with women. It started with people of color, at least here in this country. And um, what I say, and this is my message, and you can, shoot, you can steal it if you like, if you want to. You can borrow it and tell people. But I think you always have to be true in who you are, and you always have to be a gentleman. You don't have to yell at someone. And the moment you walk away from someone and start yelling, say, I can't talk to you because you feel this way, then you've lost your power of <coughs> negotiation and your influence. So what I will say to people is that the scriptures have been used to discriminate against black people for slavery and during the civil rights movement for segregation. They've been used to subjugate women uh, and to send children as well. And so I think that we, especially in America, have collectively agreed and come to a place where it's not okay to discriminate against women, to discriminate against African Americans or Hispanics or any minority. And so I think now we should come, we are at a point where we've evolved and we should collectively agree that it's not okay to discriminate against gay people. And so you can't pick and choose which doctrines or which teachings are going to be the most detrimental for someone. You can't say, well, you can't eat meat. Well, that's all right. You can't say that you can't have gluttony. Well, that's okay. You can't say, well, I, you can't wear this clothing. That's an abomination. That's okay. So when it comes to teachings about gay people, you say, well, yeah, it's okay. You can't pick and choose that. So you, I think you have to be on point and know your history if you're going to talk about that and know that the, the same things that are used to discriminate against a certain group of people are used to discriminate against gay people and we are just picking and choosing which ones we want to use to discriminate against a certain group and it's not okay. But I also think, and I know this, that your power is in your dollar. Mm -hmm. And so if you choose to support a place like this bookstore, right, instead of going to a place where that may not have a good record when it comes to uh, diversity and, and hiring people, gay people, people of color, or whomever, women. You can choose to support organizations that help people who are gay. You can, choo you can choose to put your influence behind those companies and behind those organizations. And you have to be able, I gave you that number jokingly, but I'm serious. You have to be able to call, write, email those places and say, hey, this is not right. We're not going to stand for discrimination. And in your own daily life, you have to just walk in truth and be who you are. And if somebody knows a gay person, it's going to make it a lot easier for them not to discriminate. You deal with your child's sexual abuse. Because a lot of us, one in six boys in this country, one in four girls, yeah. before they're 18. There's a lot of us in here who have dealt with that. And some of us not in a real good way. Well, there's an organization called One in Six that recently I've been on the board and I'm considering. It's a great organization, but they estimate that it's actually probably more than One in Six. I don't know, people, I get that question at every single signing. I don't know how, except for maybe it was just the grace of God or who knows, who knows why someone can come from poverty and one person becomes a doctor or the president and the other person goes to prison or becomes a drug dealer. I don't know. But I knew from a very young age that I wanted to accomplish something. And I didn't want, I had never lived in a box. I've never lived in a black box, I've never lived in a gay box, don't laugh at that term. I've never lived in a gay, in a gay box or any sort of box where people thought that I should be a certain way. And I, you know, not that I would want that to happen to any child to have to be molested. And at a, at, there was at one point, I'm sure each of us in this room would have traded being gay so that you could have a normal life and you wouldn't have to deal with those issues. I wouldn't trade it now because it's made me who I am. But I think that because of those things, that I broke out of that shell at a very early age and realized that I could survive without living in a box. That I could survive certain things um, like being molested and having the fear of some people finding out or the, my molester telling my parents that I that he did it because I wanted to do it. That's what they tell you, right? I'll just tell them that you wanted to do it. So I just think that 
I don't know how I turned that around. I just think I became, as I said, I isolated myself. I became very creative at a young age. And I chose a different outlet rather than drugs or alcohol or any of that stuff. I mean, I still have the vestiges of, of being molested as a, as a young person. But I'm aware of them because I reached, I, I went to therapy um, in my early 20s to deal with it. I don't know how it happened. I just think maybe I was lucky and maybe, you know, I think by the time I was 12 or 13, 13 or 14 years old, my parents moved out of that community and then it took me away from my molester and I was just lucky enough to have survived that. But um, I really think the gay part, the creative part, the awareness from being gay kind of helped me overcome that. I don't know if I, if I had not been gay, I don't know if I would have had the same sort of thing. I don't know. I'm not a straight person, so I don't know. I just know as a gay man, I'm very creative and that I sometimes live in a fantasy world. <laughs> that has helped me out, helped me deal with a lot of things. It, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. You're watching Gay TV Atlanta. Welcome to the dawn. You're watching Gay TV Atlanta. Welcome.